Hi everyone, I'm Jamie from The Hands That Shape and today I'm going to be showing you the Hummingbird DIY paint kit. Uh, in a minute here I will open this up and show you what comes with the kit. I'm also going to paint and glue it. This project should take about 45 minutes to an hour to complete. Alright, so I'm going to get this opened up and show you what's inside. Alright, each one of the paint kits comes with instructions and there's going to be some information on the here um, about gluing the project, um, attaching the sawtooth hanger that comes in this kit, um, or you know you, if you don't want to use either one of that, you can use the uh, easel that comes with it. So I suggest reading these instructions first uh, before you get started. Uh, there's also a color guide that comes with each kit, um, and it's going to tell you right here what colors come with the kit and then also which colors you can mix in addition um, and it will tell you exactly how many drops of each color to mix up. And then the second part of the color guide is a uh, picture and it has some labels on it uh, so you know exactly what pieces to paint which color. And lastly this has a bunch of QR codes uh, to YouTube so you can watch assembly videos like this one, uh, our website where uh, there are additional DIY kits, and the bio site for uh, the handset shape that has all of our social media. So moving on to the kit, here is the laser cut uh, hummingbird paint kit. Everything is packaged in plastic and then the easel is um, wrapped up as well. They, everything comes with an easel and there are four paint brushes, two for a uh, finer detail and then some that give a little more, they're a little bit thicker. And then you got all the paints, the glue, so once everything's dried up um, you can glue all of these pieces. There's two pieces, it comes with a backer so everything will get glued onto that. And then all right, this is that sawtooth hanger, so you can use this or the easel. All I'm going to start with the sun first since uh, that's a color that I don't need to mix. One thing that I think is useful, um, especially if you want to try to keep everything together and just pull out individual pieces, um, some tape. This is painter's tape. Um, so that's really good for just rolling up a little piece and then that way I can lift out these sun pieces easier without really disturbing the rest of, uh, of the art. <laughs> I'm just going to pull all these yellow sun pieces out.
Okay, so I'm gonna be mixing up this H color. Uh, I think that's where like the flowers. So um, this one, it's calling for five drops of this magenta and then one drop of this Kelly Green to gray it down. So if you just hold this upside down and just give it a little bit of a squeeze, um, you'll get uh, your drops to be pretty consistent. So just do five, that's two, three, I'm gonna go ahead and paint these leaves next and this one so the main part of the leaf is actually just the straight color and then I'm also going to have to mix up uh, what we're calling K so it's K will be the darker color will be five drops of this and then a couple drops of this brown so I'm just gonna put both colors in here All right, so I have both colors, both green colors on that. So there's a little bit of a subtle difference in the color. All right, I'm gonna go mix up this color, which is, this is the magenta, and then it's the um, flamingo coral and some antique white. So, oh, so it's three drops of each.
I'm gonna do this piece next. This one's just the brown. Next, I'm going to be painting, um, I guess, the hummingbird piece. So, part of this is just the straight teal color. So, I'm going to be using that, um, and I'll just pick out those pieces and get those painted. All right, so I think I'm gonna be mixing up um, the rest of the colors. There's two other teal colors. Um, I guess one's a medium and one's a light teal. So I'll probably just mix both those up because one of them goes on part of the hummingbird and then also part of the background. And then that medium teal color is also part of the background. So I'll mix both those up. Um, so we can get those painted. And you know what, I think I'm just gonna mix up this last color. M. And that's some of the accent on the wings. Alright, so for my medium, I'm going to do five drops of this and five drops of the white. This next one's gonna be the lighter color, and that's just six drops of this dark, or sorry, three drops of this darker color and six of the antique white. So that's what three drops looks like. I'm doing four drops of the white, two drops of the flamingo coral, and then a drop of the green. Okay, so I'm gonna get the rest of these ones mixed up. Uh, and the nice thing about these paints uh, are that they're acrylic, which means that they dry really fast. So if you mix the shade up and start painting and you decide that you don't like it, um, you only have to wait like five minutes for it to dry and then you can just mix something else up um, and paint over it.
Okay, so I'm just left with a couple colors uh, that still need to be painted. So I guess I'll save all the white pieces for last because white is probably on this frame. Um, it's a big chunk. So if you notice on here, uh, there are some lines scored on here. Um, and these are going to be painted uh, this antique white and then this color M that I mixed up just a little bit ago. So I'll use one of the uh, thinner brushes to paint these details. All right, so every uh, piece that's still here, sitting on top of this backer, they all get antique white, which is this color right here. Okay, so now I'm all done painting all of the pieces. Um, I'm gonna let this sit and dry, probably for 20 or 30 minutes um, before I start to glue uh, everything together. Um, so I suggest, you know, probably waiting that 20 to 30 minutes to just really make sure everything is dry because um, a lot of times after I glue everything together, um, usually I'll put something heavy on top to weight it down um, just so everything all the pieces are making contact with the backer um, so make sure um, you know look at all your pieces make sure everything uh, is painted you don't you're not missing uh, any little bits of paint here or there or make sure um, nothing needs a second coat uh, before you go ahead and glue that up just so it has sufficient time to dry before you do start gluing everything together all right so I'm gonna let this sit for a bit and I'll come back and get this glued up shortly Okay, everything's dry now, so I am going to glue everything up. Um, and I think the best way to do this is instead of just taking all these pieces and putting glue on each one and um, placing them on the board, um, I think it's easiest to just put glue on the entire backer and then um, and then put the pieces on.
I think I have enough glue on here. You just want to go around the edges, make sure you don't have big drips coming off because wood glue, this particular wood glue, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't dry clear. Um, so you'll definitely be able to see any glue gobs that are dried to the sides uh, when you're done, like right there. I would just wipe them. These ones, it might be easier to like put the flower together since we have the glue down. Um, you probably don't want to like put the petal down and be like, oh no, that's in the wrong spot and then try to lift it and get glue on everything. So I think it's probably best to just like put the flower in order. Okay, so this is all put together. Um, make sure, well, it's still pretty wet because um, wood glue will get tacky probably um, within like 10 minutes and then it will be really difficult to move pieces around. So you want to put everything together really quickly um, and then make sure before you weight it down to dry, make sure all your edges um, are aligned and everything's um, how you like it. Okay, so I found some stuff to weight it down with. Um, so this piece here, this little yellow piece, I ended up painting the wrong side. Um, so I went ahead um, and painted that, popped it in. And it should be fairly dry by now, but since it didn't dry as long as everything else, I just got a piece of parchment paper. I'm gonna just put it over this um, for it to dry. And I'm just gonna weight this whole thing down 
with a book, something that covers everything and then you can just grab. So I have weights in this case. I'm going to use my heaviest one up here because um, that's the edge that was kind of popping up a little bit. So I'll weigh that down. I just make sure everything dries really flat. So I'll let that dry um, probably for a couple hours and then we'll come back and open it up. 